is an 800 horsepower Challenger Hellcat Red Eye. It's so what if we could take all of this modern technology and performance and transplant it back into a classic, iconic looking 72 Challenger? The 72 Challenger behind me is one of the most solid early 70s Mopars I've ever seen. There's no rust anywhere. Yeah, some pieces have been patched in. It's been it's been redone. But man, this car is perfect for what we're going to do to it. Carcraft always focused on muscle cars, which is perfect for this build behind me. Um, Carcraft is about innovation and uh, especially drivetrain swaps. So we're going to be taking a modern Hellcat engine and putting it into this old Challenger. One of the biggest difference between the modern car and the old Challenger is literally where the rubber meets the road. Old 15 inch wheels and tires with a lot of sidewall versus newer 18 inch wheels with a shorter sidewall, less deflection and way better traction. So this thing rolled in here on a 15 inch wheel and tire combination and while it fits it looks really dated and we can do a lot better for handling as well. We're going to go for an 18 inch wheel diameter and a lower profile sidewall on the tires. We know that it's going to fit within the wheel arch itself size wise but we need to measure for back space before we order the new wheels. First step is to set the tool for the desired wheel width which in our case is 9 inches. Then you assemble it inside the tire and bolt it onto the hub. So with this tool we can measure the overall fitment of the wheel and tire combination in the wheelhouse, but also we can measure a lock to lock turn and see if we get let's see if we get any interference so we can get the biggest wheel and tire possible. So the front has got an 18 by 9 inch wheel with a 5 and a quarter inch backspace. On the back, we've got an 18 by 10 inch wheel with a five and a half inch backspace. Now that we know our backspace, we can order our wheels and move on to the suspension. So to get the modern performance out of our 72 Challenger like we just experienced driving the new Hellcat, we're going to replace the entire front suspension and we are going to be replacing it with this stuff from AJE. It is a coilover conversion. It allows us to get rid of the heavy crossmember that's in the car. We get rid of the torsion bars, so we'll have some adjustability in ride height and shock settings, plus just a better design geometry suspension. Gives us bigger brakes, uh, multiple motor mount options, room for steering and exhaust. So from the factory, these early E-bodies had a steering gearbox and we will be eliminating that and replacing it with a much better performing, more modern rack and pinion steering system. So this is a convenient way to keep power steering fluid from spilling all over your floor. favorite assignments with Carcraft was the first time I went to Oklahoma City to photograph the Street Outlaws guys. That was my first sort of venture into a large scale photo shoot, but then also being part of this thing that was about to explode at the time. These guys were in their very first season. The first episode actually aired while I was still in Oklahoma City, so I got to watch it at a bar with them. That was pretty cool. 
So the factory bump stops have to be removed because the AJE suspension comes with its own upper shock mounts to house and mount the coilovers. So we've got to cut a bunch of spot welds, make a bunch of sparks, drill a bunch of holes, and then put this stuff in before we put the K-memory in. on these e-body cars are just stamped steel. AJE suspension provides crush sleeves between the two connection points that reinforces the existing structure. So our new K-members in the car and now we're going to build out the rest of the suspension. So to attach the spindle to our tubular lower A-arm we need to use this ball joint adapter that also functions as a steering arm. We'll get that attached to the spindle, get that on there, and then we'll finish building our upper control arms with new bushings and sleeves and washers. This is the Scoggin Dickey Hellcrate engine. 707 horsepower, 650 foot-pounds of complete crate package. Ready to roll, right? Gen 3 Hemi, supercharged. Got some uh, cool looking tubular manifolds. Dual disc clutch on the back. That's pretty nice. Yeah. And um, this thing looks like it's ready to drop in. We'll see if it fits on our K-member. This is a pretty complete package. Comes with the accessory drive, injectors are already installed, coil packs. This is the nucleus of making that thing drive like that other thing that we drove and it was amazing. Absolutely. All right, let's just throw it in. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just like that. Yeah. Kevin, I think it might go in easier if we took these exhaust manifolds off. So this engine, because it's based on a production car, has a front sump, which is what the Challengers and Chargers would have, but that doesn't fit our cross member in the car, so we're gonna need to switch this pan out with one that's a rear sump. is a huge success. We got the engine in the car, front suspension mocked up, we've measured for wheels and tires, and next we get to figure out what it takes to make this thing run. Yeah. 